and it's recording. Hey guys, so on, on June 22nd, I closed uh, kind of the biggest and most creative investment of my career. And I had a lot of comments of people asking exactly what happened and what it was. So I figured I'd do a video and just explain uh, how it all went down essentially. So the whole purpose of the transaction was to borrow funds for my upcoming development in Cornwall. It's an 18 bedroom rooming house. So I solicited 300,000 in private funding uh, from, from a private lender. On here, I've kind of pre uh, wrote my entire kind of portfolio and I'll get into uh, exactly how the deal went down. So for private lenders, the most thing they're most, uh, the biggest thing they're concerned about is security. So I wanted to offer, I needed to tweak my existing portfolio to offer the private lender as much security as possible. So on here, we have a list of all my properties. Um, the addresses, again, if you don't believe me, you can look them up on, uh, you know, it's all public knowledge. So. so what we did first was I had two properties in my corporate name. And what I want to do is I want to register a security uh, for my private lender. So the first thing we needed to do to make the transaction simple was to convert my two properties, my corporate name, to my personal name. Unfortunately, that is, that is deemed a sale, so it was land transfer tax involved, but uh, I guess it's the cost of doing business. So just bear with me. I'm going to change and show you how it all went down. So these two properties immediately went into my, my personal name. So now I had 11 properties uh, for the transaction, uh, all in my, registered in my personal name. This is the subject property for the development. So the next thing I wanted to do was have as much equity on that particular site as possible. Um, there was an existing private first mortgage. So what I want to do is I wanted to discharge that in order to offer again, as much security as possible to the private lender. So what I did is I discharged this. That was a $45,000 first private mortgage. So I'll show you how I netted the proceeds at the end. Okay. Um, second thing I want to do is so my goal was to register a blanket mortgage uh, in the name of the private lender against all of my properties, which offers as much security as possible. A blanket mortgage, for those who don't know, is one mortgage against multiple properties. So in the event of default, uh, I guess the private lender could power sale any one of those properties registered under the blanket. It offers a lot of security. So if I look at my existing mortgages, INS means institutional. So I had institutional first mortgages on all my properties. I then had a few privates that I wanted to discharge again to offer as much security to the private. So this is what I did. We discharged this private, this private, uh, this private mortgage. This right here was a uh, CH means a chattel mortgage. It was just a, I kind of had a new furnace, so it was a lien against the property. We discharged that and I actually paid it out. It was about five grand. Okay. I then had an existing blanket mortgage against these properties, sometimes in second or third position. What I want to do is I want to consolidate that too. So I actually got rid of it. We actually discharged all this blanket. So this is all done by one private lender, but I'll show you how it all came back in the end. So temporarily I had no mortgages, which was great. I was instantly a, a multimillionaire <laughs> just for about five minutes. Okay, so then we do it. All my properties were clean, and we could, could proceed with registering the private lender in basically first position here, and then first position all the way down. Blanket, 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 blanket. So this private lender now is secured as a blanket against all of my properties in second position for everything except the subject property, which is uh, secured in first position. Quite a lot of security. Um, then the existing blanket that I had, what we did is we postponed, or a postponement is moving the position as it's registered. So we re-registered the existing blanket, uh, and that person is now in third position on everything except for the subject property. Um, in order to, to solidify and basically increase my net worth to solidify more, of a, more security for the private lender. We also did a couple of other things unrelated to my properties. 
There was two other mortgages that I had transferred into my name. These are second mortgages, an amount of seventy-one thousand seven hundred transferred into my name and increased my net worth again, in, increases the security for the lender. And we had additional securities. There are six other properties that I have lent people down payments for. So what I did is I registered second mortgages against all six of these properties in my name. So I have, if you look at this chart, sorry, I've got to go this way. I now have second mortgage against all these properties. There was an existing second mortgage. I had to discharge that. That was fourteen thousand. Um, so I'll show you how I netted the proceeds. There was ten thousand legal fees, essentially, for all of this stuff, which netted me two hundred twenty-six thousand. Uh, yeah, basically. So what I was able to do this uh, from a three hundred thousand dollar private, I cleaned up my deals. I netted two twenty-six, which is going to go directly towards the development in Conliffe. So it's a unique, unique deal that I did, but it's an example of how you can, what's called cross uh, collateral mortgaging or leveraging. So I had existing equity in the property. Um, I wanted to tap into that equity to use for future development. I didn't have to refinance any of my properties, which could, there could be mortgage penalties, et cetera. And I didn't have to sell any properties, which again, triggers mortgage penalties or, land, or uh, capital gains or something like that. So this is a unique way. If you do have existing properties and existing portfolio with equity, you can use it, leverage the properties uh, strategically to access funds for future development. Uh, I probably, this probably didn't make sense to anybody, but that's what happened, and thanks for listening.